Okay, so we're going to have a look at a few different formulas for the sample variance of a data set. So here we've just got the most sort of basic formula, where it's your average sort of squared difference between your data points and the sample mean. And just a little bit of algebraic manipulation will show that this is also equal to this familiar form, where you find the average sort of squared value of all of your data points, and then you have to subtract the sample mean squared. And here we're just saying x bar is the sample mean, as usual. And here we're dividing by 1 over n rather than 1 over n minus 1. So this will make things nicer when we do the calculations. But of course you could at the very end just multiply by n over n minus 1 if you want to include Bessel's correction there. So these are the two formulas we're going to prove. So instead of calculating the sample mean and then working that into your formula, we're just going to do, these are basically two double summations. And the one on the right in particular is a favourite of mine. We'll start off with the one on the left, we'll show that that's also equal to the sample variance, and then we'll finish by showing that that's equivalent to the one on the right. So the method of proof we're going to use here is we're going to start with the double summation, and then we're going to show that this is equivalent to the sample variance. You could prove it in the other direction, I just think this way is probably the most straightforward to follow. So the very first thing we do here is we're just going to expand this bracket here and you get your xi squared minus 2xi xj plus your xj squared. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to consider this inner sum. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a factor of 1 over n inside. It'll turn out this is going to be really helpful for simplifying some of our terms. And I leave the factor of 1 over 2n outside of both of the sums. And then all we're going to do next is I'm going to split this sum, because you've got a sum of three terms being added together. I'm just going to split this up into three separate sums then we can start to deal with these one by one. Okay, so let's have a look at this very first one. You've got 1 over n, the sum of xi squared. So perhaps you remember from at the very beginning that the sample variance is equal to this minus the sample mean squared. So you can just rearrange this, and now we can replace this sum multiplied by the 1 over n by the sample variance squared plus the mean squared. So let's do that. So we've got rid of that very first sum, and next we'll deal with the second sum, so you'll spot here that we're summing over i, so you can take out this factor of 2xj. So let's do that. And then hopefully you can see here that this 1 over n sum from i equals 1 to nxi, this is just the sample mean. So we can just replace that by an x bar. And then we've dealt with this second inner sum. And finally for this third inner sum, all you need to notice here is that we're actually summing over i, but then xj squared doesn't depend on i. So you're just going to end up with n lots of this and then we're multiplying by 1 over n. So your 1 over n cancels with this n, and all you're left with there is a plus xj squared. So there you go, we've dealt with the inner sums, and we've run out of space, so let me move this line up to the top, and now we'll start to deal with this second sum, where we're summing over j now. So the very first thing to spot here is that your s squared plus your sample mean squared, this doesn't depend on j, so we can just take this outside of the sum, multiply it by n, this will cancel with your 1 over n, so you end up with a half s squared plus the sample mean squared, and then plus the rest of the stuff in this sum. Then all we're going to do next is just split this remaining sum into two separate sums. We'll deal with these two separately. So for the first of these two sums, you'll spot that your minus 2 x bar doesn't depend on j, so you can take that out as a factor. Your 2 cancels with the half outside of the sum, and you're just left with minus x bar, 1 over n, sum of xj. And this is particularly nice because you know that 1 over n, the sum of xj, this is just x bar again. So you're actually going to get a negative x bar squared term there. Really nice. And then we've just got one more sum to deal with. So hopefully you recognise this one now as summing over j xj squared. So we can use this formula again, just replace this by s squared plus x bar squared. Only remember that we're multiplying by 1 over 2n. So you need to have a factor of a half outside there. Okay, and then we're actually almost done here, because you can spot here, if you look at all of your x-bar terms, you've got a half x-bar, you've got a negative x-bar squared, and then you've also got plus another half x-bar squared. So these all cancel and disappear, and all you're left with is a half s squared plus another half s squared, which gives you s squared. So there you go, we've shown that this double sum is in fact equivalent to the sample variance. And now I promised two different formulas, so we'll have a go at showing that this double sum now is equal to this one on the right-hand side. So this is a really nice, satisfying little formula that's also equivalent to the sample variance. We'll start off with the double sum, and we'll show that this is equivalent to our other formula. 
the first thing we're going to do is let's actually visualize what's going on with this double sum. So you're summing from i equals 1 to n and j equals 1 to n. So you can imagine here maybe if n was 6, you'd be summing over all these different contributions for different values of i and j. And the first thing you might notice is along this diagonal, what are we actually summing? We're summing xi minus xj all squared. So if you have x1 minus x1 all squared or x2 minus x2 all squared, well, this is all just going to be equal to zero. So you can actually get rid of this stuff along this diagonal because these are all just going to be equal to zero. And then how do we write this? Well, I'm now going to write it as a sum over i doesn't equal j where it's sort of implicit that i and j are ranging between 1 and n. And then we've tidied this up slightly. And then the next thing to notice is that we've actually got two different triangular regions, the blue one and the red one. So in the blue region, this is where i is less than j. And your red region, this triangular region, is where j is less than i. So we've kind of split up this sum now just into two other ones, where i is less than j and where i is greater than j. And then we take note of there's quite a nice bit of symmetry here. So for example, if you have x4 minus x2 squared, that's the same as having x2 minus x4 squared. So in a more general form, this is the same as saying that xi minus xj squared is the same as xj minus xi all squared. So you can actually replace all of these red dots, all the contributions from there. You could just replace those by copies of the blue contributions. So here we can replace the sum where i is greater than j by just another copy of the sum where i is less than j. You get exactly the same set of values now multiplied by 2. And then this is particularly nice because you've got your factor of a half on the outside and you've also got this factor of 2, so they cancel. And this gives you 1 over n squared, your sum over all values of i less than j, xi minus xj all squared, which is what we set out to prove.